Hello, so I found a Minesweeper website with a leaderboard and I want my name in lights. Evan, I thought you were terrible at Minesweeper. How do you plan on getting on top of the Read leaderboard? the title, you dickhead. We're using computers, baby. Wow. AI level one. Okay, so what's the lowest level shittiest AI you can think of? This? is so much worse than that. Aww. We don't need to look at the screen. Hell, we don't even have any if statements in this bad boy. The plan is to pick a random tile and click it. That's it, just fucking click shit. Can we be Minesweeper by just clicking randomly? I doubt it, but it's a start. Okay, I coded that. Really wasn't hard, uh, but let's try it out. <laughs> I don't know what I expected, honestly. But this isn't as dumb as you think it is. To get on the leaderboard, we don't have to win every time. We just have to win one time. So if we just have it click randomly for a bit and then click the reset button, eventually it has to win, right? <laughs> Clicking for four seconds was very optimistic. <laughs> we could probably speed that up. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, I can't stop it. Ah, oh, fuck, not again. Ah, oh, I can't alt tab. Oh, help, help. Ah, oh, what the fuck is that? So I had to shut down my computer. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't know what the odds are of winning Minesweeper by clicking randomly, but I don't imagine it's great. So this makes this a game of speed. The quicker we can play, the more games we can play and the more chances we have of getting stupid lucky. At the moment, the main bottleneck is me. I have to be watching and stop the program when we win. Otherwise the program will just reset and keep playing like nothing happened. So let's have the program check this pixel here. If it's black, then we win. And we can check if this pixel here is black to see if we've lost. Then we just have the program restart on a loss and stop on a win. And now we can finally send it at max speed. All right, let's go, baby. All right, all right. Oh, what the fuck? That's so fun. Go, go, go. We might be able to do this. Go. I believe. I believe. I still believe, I think. You can go on, surely. It's going so fast. Eventually. <laughs> yes! Oh my god. I can't believe that worked. How many games? Oh, it only took 2,944 games, but we got there, baby. <laughs> so dumb. Okay, okay, it's name time. Not code bullet. <laughs> the perfect crime. I'm top of today. I'm top of this week. I'm top of this month. And oh, baby, we top of all time. We did it. But get it done. Easy, easy game. Before I run this on the intermediate map, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Opera GX. Welcome to the new and improved Opera GX. That's right, Opera GX got a facelift, baby. But Code Bullet wasn't Opera... Uh, well, wasn't Opera GX already the sexiest browser around? What an amazing question. Yeah, here's, here's your money. Did I do good? No, you fucked it up. Now get off my screen. Opera GX is like Henry Cavill or the Low Putty Evolution line? The Low Putty... What the fuck? Who wrote that? It's like Henry Cavill. Let's keep it at that. It looked good before, now even better. Anyway, this is the old Opera GX. Wow, pretty sexy, but look at this. <laughs> we got new GX corner, new settings, new mod manager, all sexy. Speaking of mods, there is more customization than ever. Check out this Capybara mod. Of course, you can do all the awesome stuff you expect from Opera GX, like custom wallpapers, custom keyboard sounds, custom background yeah. music, opening and closing tab sounds, browser themes and colors, but now you can do so much more. Look at this, you can even change the Opera GX icon at the bottom, like the logo. And watch what happens when you open it. <laughs> Fantastic. That's beautiful. You can customize fucking anything you want down to the font they use in the settings menu. Customization to an unnecessary degree. They've even got a code bullet mod. But what if you're a Chrome user Ew. and don't want to change all the bookmarks and stuff? Watch this. Settings, synchronizations, import bookmarks and settings. Import, boom, you're done, you're welcome. It's free, it's easy to convert, and it's better. And you can get it now using my link, operagx.gg slash codebullet4, or just click the link in the description. You'll get a sick browser and you'll help support your boy. Okay, thank you, back to the video. Alright, that was actually way easier than I thought. I probably edited it because you can't have the attention span of a goldfish on ketamine, but that only took us 2 minutes and 35 seconds. That's a whopping 19 games per second. So I know intermediate will be harder, but let's run this bitch overnight and see what happens.
Okay, yeah, well, fuck. <laughs> that did not work. Uh, I ran this for like 16 hours and no dice. This was our best attempt, which finished with 27 spaces left. Actually, that's wrong, that's a lie. This is our best attempt, but it kind of just gets dumb lucky and then immediately dies, which felt distinctly less impressive. I did a quick and probably vastly incorrect calculation of the chances to win and came out with a one in seven trillion... Seven hundred and ninety-nine billion, six hundred seven million, three hundred and seventy thousand, six hundred and ninety-three. At the speed of our program, that would have taken 13... 1216 years to win. So, uh, yeah, not ideal, which means we're gonna need to go to AI level two. Okay, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to actually look at the screen now. Since all the numbers are a different color, and since all the numbers have these pixels here overlapping, we can tell what number each tile is by simply checking that pixel there. We can also check to see if a tile is up or down by checking the color of the top left pixel. Also, if the tile is up and the program thinks it's a seven, then it's actually a flag. And we don't really actually have to worry about bombs because if we see those, then it's already too late. With all that coded in, our program now has complete knowledge of the game. So let's add some logic. So rule one is if the number of empty spaces around a number is the same as that number, then they are all bombs. This is admittedly very basic shit, but a moment ago we were clicking randomly, so it's actually a huge improvement. With this rule coded, we can send our new and improved AI to battle. Let's go. Oh, yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess that worked. I, I thought it, I thought there'd be more clicks, uh, but I guess that's a start. This is the most cursed way of doing this, but it's working. Okay. Let's actually have the code loop through it. So I don't have to keep playing it like this. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. I can actually now just play it and the program will take over whenever it sees a bomb. Hey, let me click. Let me click. You motherfucker. Let me click. No, 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 we've already lost. It's already over. Not again. Okay, rule two. If the number of flags around a number is equal to that number, then all surrounding unclicked spaces are safe. Just running rule two on this map does this. Okay, cool, very nice. So we got rule one, which detects bombs. So we got rule two, which detects safe spots. Now, if we put them together, we get some magic. Oh, what happened? Uh, oh, I got stuck. What happens if I click? Oh, yeah! Wait, wait, wait. Five seconds is pussy shit. That's Camille level score. I'm shooting for the lowest possible score. The holy one second. talking about yeah not code bullet and say wait wait where's my score where's where's my fucking score it was one second what did you do camille what did you fucking do why you even took my beginner score from me okay okay it's fine let's calm down let's calm down let's do some science what happens if we get a new beginner high score uh, okay so it appears that I have been shadow banned. They probably saw my one second time on intermediate and said, fuck off, which is, you know, fair. <laughs> I'm guessing that they have my IP address stored somewhere. Uh, but honestly, what? Look at this website. You're telling me they have advanced IP tracking bot detection, but they can't change the hyperlink text from bot using the default font. Why do they have bot detection? What are you talking about? So currently, if I win, nothing happens. My name doesn't get added to the high score, nothing changes. But if I'm right and I've been IP shadow banned, then what might happen if I change my IP address using today's sponsor, Opera GX's built-in VPN? Okay, now when we win, Yes! Yeah, baby! We're so back! You know, with me! You know, with me! Get rolled! Woo! So I tried to win expert with my current algorithm, but it kept getting stuck. Maybe if I ran this algorithm for ages, it would get lucky, but there's definitely more we can do. AI level three. We currently have two rules, but if you look up Minesweeper patterns, there are a ton of more rules you can add to figure out where the bombs are. But if you really think I'm doing all that, you don't know me at all. So here's the plan. What we want is just one more rule that can encapsulate all of these rules. Such a rule sounds too good to be true, and it is. 
for humans, for but we ain't you all humans, we're using computers, so here's the plan. We look at all the border spaces and simulate every possible configuration of bombs. Then we only keep the configurations that don't contradict the numbers and shit. So this one's invalid because there's like three flags and there's like a what? You guys know how blind simple works. If there's only one possible bomb configuration, then it's too easy, we found it, we know where the bombs are. But what about when there are multiple possible configurations? For example, this bad boy here actually has four valid layouts. If we play them on top of each other, we can see that these guys actually aren't changing, which which means that in all possible configurations, these are bombs and these are safe. And if in all possible configurations, something's a bomb, I shouldn't have to explain to you that it's a bomb. So now we know what to click and stuff. Okay, that's coded, let's run it. Oh yeah, baby. Oh wait, wait, fuck. I forgot to change the VPN. Fuck. <laughs> no, I took my intermediate score too. Duh. Oh man, and somehow someone has dethroned me on beginner? What? Okay, bring it on. I can do this. Come on, Canada. Okay, I got expert. Nice. Croatia. I believe in you, Croatia. Come on. Wait, what? My expert time is gone now. Come on, Czech Republic. I always loved you. Unknown? What does that mean? Uh, my immediate time is gone. Fuck you, Czech Republic. I trusted you. Denmark. Come on, Denmark. Okay, we got that one. Good. Finland. Finland, I choose you. Finland, you fuckers. I'm finished with you. France, come on. Don't make me forget this. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, come on, Germany. You motherfuckers. This is the worst thing Germany has ever done, I think. Okay, okay, fuck, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Let's actually figure out what's happening here. Okay, here's what I learned. When submitting your score, if the IP has been shadow banned, your score doesn't even show up. It's just immediately thrown out. I can't tell what gets you shadow banned. Something like if your score is way too good or if you submitted too many high scores too quickly, uh, something like that. If your IP is not shadow banned, then your score sticks and you pass the first check. This stays until the server does a more advanced check. From what I can tell, this check is done every like five seconds or so. This advanced check is fucked. I don't know what they're doing, but I cannot seem to pass this. Even when I have a brand new IP and I get a score of nine, which isn't that good. That's like a tie with first place, uh, that gets removed. So with that new information, here's the plan. The goal is to get on top of all the leaderboards at once. They can get removed after that, I don't care. I just want a screenshot of me on top of all the leaderboards. So here's the plan. All we need to do is get three high scores before that advanced check runs. That gives us about five seconds to <gasps> beat beginner, enter my name, click confirm, click this to change to intermediate, beat intermediate, enter my name, click confirm, click this to change to expert, beat expert, enter my name and click confirm. All in under five seconds. Whew. Okay, let's do this shit. Ready? Don't blink. Oh my God, yes. Yes, there it is, baby. We're done. I'm free. Yeah, top three of all leaderboards, baby. Victory. One more thing I wanted to do for absolutely no reason at all, but welcome to the channel. I wanted to do this map right here, which is as big as the site can go. Well, I could actually do a bigger like square, but that doesn't fit nicely on the screen. So let it rip. Minesweeper actually has a lot of situations that you have to guess. Like there's like a 50-50 shot of whether something's a bomb or not, especially when the map is this big. So when there's a guess, we do the generate all possible configurations thing. Then we pick the safe spot that shows up in the most configurations. Basically we're calculating the probability of all the squares being a bomb and clicking the one that's the least likely to be a bomb. You might have already seen this, but I figured out how to change the cursor using Python. So his cursor changes based on his current emotion. We got, he says like fuck when he's guessing and stuff. I don't know. I thought that was very funny. That took me like a day, but it was worth it. I also have him pause for a second when he's guessing um, for dramatic effect. Not because my program takes a while to generate the probabilities. It's dramatic effect. It's dramatic effect. With all the guessing it has to do, it's actually really hard to win. There really is no way of improving the AI from here. It's picking the mathematically best move possible but it has to guess correct like five to ten times on this map to win i do really like watching this though it reminds me of the bacteria or fungal growth time lapse videos i don't know it's very satisfying <laughs>
that's the video, which means it's Patreon battle time. Hello, okay, welcome to the Patreon battle. If you haven't seen this, this is the thing I put on for my Patreons to show them some love and it's an excuse for me to yap. But another video, baby, that's two back to back. I'm crazy. This one is pretty chill. I actually, I actually had a lot of fun doing this one. Although I really did not expect this fucking site to have bot detection. That's crazy. I picked it specifically because it looked like it didn't have bot detection. There are other more fancy Minesweeper websites I could have chosen, but ah oh well, it made for a funny video, I suppose. I actually have done a video on Minesweeper before, uh, like fucking seven years ago. <laughs> God damn. I just watched it after editing this and I was like, oh, I wonder how much I've improved. And literally everything is the same. I mean, of course, like the editing and everything's completely different, but like my AI was <laughs> exactly the same. I was like, fuck. Anyway, congrats to Robert L. Today you got a Robert W. That's a fucking shit joke. <laughs> Shut up, I'm exhausted. I've done so much editing. <laughs> uh, anyway, Robert, you win some free merch from coboltshop.com. Uh, I'll be in touch. Anyway, I'll see you guys very soon. Have a good one.